So I have my eight laterals cut and I also have eight caps because what we're going to do is we're going to glue the lateral into place and then we're going to have a cap on the end so we can control the water to do what we want. So the next step is I'm going to glue these caps on all of these laterals. Now that the caps are all on, now the next step is to glue the laterals into place. We're just going to glue them all in, like so. It'll look like that when we're done. Now one little thing that I do when I'm gluing my, my bog manifolds together and laterals, if you'll notice, I always put that line in the downward position so if I go to take a photograph it looks real clean. So I'll take the line in the up position, give it a twist until I can't see it. That way if I decide to take a picture, I don't have lines randomly sticking up everywhere. Okay, there we have it. Okay, that assembly is done. But now we need to create some slots for the water to pass through. So let me take a little, little time to explain how this, this is going to be working. We're going to plumb through the bottom. We're going to be sending water through here. The water is going to be shooting down this line and then it works its way out these manifolds. So right now there's no place for the water to go until we put the slots in there. So this is the top. I'm gonna to flip it upside down. And look, you see all my black lines there. 
When doing a bog filter, this is a real low flow system. In this pond, I might be having 600, maybe 900 gallons max running through the system. So two inch pipe I'm using right now. I know a lot of people are thinking, wow, that pipe's really big. Hey, how can I use inch and a half? Can I use inch and a quarter? Can I use one inch? A lot of things going through people's minds like that. I like to oversize the pipe because it's gonna reduce your maintenance and it lets the water flow through there at a different speed. So since it's gonna be an active bog and we're gonna have plants planted in on top of the gravel, the root system's gonna work down through there. You'll need to take the time to manage the plants and, and thin them out on occasion and not let the roots get bound up in your system here. So what I'm gonna do is, I usually want about every four inches I want slots. I want that's where I want the water to come through about every four inches. So I'll cut my slots here and here. I'm just going to go through and mark all this, and then I am going to show you how I'm going to score this thing with a skill saw. I'll use a carbide tip blade so it's it's nice and thick. even come down this line as well. So what I've done here is I've, that four and the A, the four inch line marks pretty good right here, all the way down. So I'm just gonna come through and put my slots right here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drill a small hole in the cap of each one of these guys so water can pass out through that section as well. So I'm marking it all up so we can see what we're going to do here. Now notice about every four inches we have a mark and that's where we're going to cut a slot and I even have a mark in the caps so water can come out the cap. Now if you'll notice in this section from here to here I have, what do we have? about nine inches. So I want a slot about every four inches. Now since this is not a high pressure system, it's all low flow, I'm gonna put a slot in the middle of my fitting here. And as I work my way this way, four inches, four inches, this area I have about seven inches. So I want it about at least every four inches to have a slot. So as you work your way down this line, you'll see I'm gonna put a little slot right here for water to come through, and I'm also gonna add a slot right there. So now I have an area every four inches where water can percolate up through and then those slots are going to be facing down when we put it inside the unit. So now it's time to start cutting those, those slots in there with my skill saw. Okay, so now I set my blade on my skill saw. What do I have here? It's set at about three quarters of an inch. So I don't want to really big slot. I don't want this thing all falling apart after I make my cuts in there. So I set the blade and it's at about three quarters of an inch and I'll just run straight across all these guys. Now I'm going to drill a hole in the cap of each one of these. I have this cool little unibit, and I'm just going to drill about a quarter inch hole in each one of these caps.
Double check all of our slits, got the holes on the end. Let's check it out in the container and see how it fits. All right, it's just perfect. I can get my bulkhead fitting right here. I have laterals about every 12 inches. Let's talk about the gravel that we're gonna use in here because it's a really important factor. This is the gravel we're gonna use. It's a smooth gravel. It's, I ordered it as 3 eighths to 3 quarters and it's nice and smooth and round. If you use angular rock, it's cheaper, but if it's angular and they're touching, it's not as open, so it doesn't work quite as well, and the plants don't grow through it as nicely. Now, another thing is, for decades, pond builders have been using lava rock to build filters, and as, as good as lava rock is as becoming a filter, it's not great in an active bog because in an active bog, you have the fine fibrous roots from all the, the marginal plants that we're planting in there, and and frankly, the, the lava rock's a little bit sharp. So as the roots are trying to grow through the, the smooth gravel, it's real easy to move through. In the sharp stuff, it's a little bit harder for the plants to, to work in there. And then when you're doing your maintenance, you want the roots to come sliding right out. You don't want them to get shredded by the lava rock. So that's why we want to use the, the smooth gravel instead of the lava rock. That's going to conclude this segment. We still have a lot of work to do here. We still have to install the pump. We have to do all the, all the drilling of the holes and the bulkheads. We're going to trim it with wood, but that's going to conclude this segment. If you have any questions about what we've done so far, please put them in the comments section. I'm Eric Triplett, The Pond Digger. Thanks for watching.